Creo Parametric 7.0 introduced multi-body modeling and you can use user-defined features or UDFs with them. Let's take a look at doing that. Here I have a self-clinching fastener, what some people refer to as a PEM nut, and I downloaded the geometry off of McMaster Car. I'm going to use this as a user-defined feature. First, I'm going to create a new part that is going to be the source model for creating the UDF, and I'll just call this my PEM source, and then click the OK button. I'll use my default template. And let's start off with a sketch on one of the datum planes. It really doesn't matter which one. I'm just going to sketch in a rectangle. And let's make this 5. And this other one, 3. Let's hit the check mark to get out of sketch mode. And now I'm going to extrude this. And for this particular PEM fastener that I downloaded, or rather PEM is trademarked, this self-clinching fastener that I downloaded, I need a thickness of 0 0.06. And then I can hit the check mark or middle mouse button. So that is good so far. And I need a hole to place this. Let's click on the hole tool. And I'll pick a surface over here. There it's got the correct diameter for this particular fastener. I will use the right mouse button to activate my offset references collector. I'm going to dimension the hole off of these side surfaces. I can right click over the depth drag handle to change the depth to, to next. And let's change these values. Let's just make these both a value of one. And that's good for my hole. So now I will hit the check mark. Right before I bring this model in, let's change the working directory just because in a moment I'm going to create a user defined feature and I want to make sure it gets saved in the right folder and I don't have to move it later on. Let me use file manage session, select working directory. And on my computer, I have all my UDFs stored in C Creo UDF. I'll click the OK button out of here. Now let's bring in the geometry for that self-clinching nut. Let's see, I am going to go to the Get Data Overflow menu and use Merge Inheritance. Let's hit the Open button. And let's see, where did I have that fastener? Let me go back to the folder where I stored it. Let's see. And I believe it is this one. I'll click the Open button. And now I have the component placement dialog box. Again, when you're doing a merge inheritance, it's a lot like assembling a component. So let me select this surface and I can use this cylindrical surface. If I click on the check mark next to the eyeglasses, I can see how this is starting to be placed. Let's click on new constraint and I'll pick this surface over here and this surface over there. That's good. I will hit the check mark. Before I hit the check mark out of the merge inheritance feature, I want to show you that on the dashboard, we have a few different choices over here. And the default one that is selected is add bodies. If you take a look in my bodies folder, right now I just have one body. It's got got the star on it indicating that it is active. Some of the other different choices that you have on here is to add material, which will make a single body, use this to remove material, or I can intersect the material. Also, another thing to show you on the options tab, we have a whole lot of other different options in here compared to Creo Parametric 6.0 and earlier. We have the include properties where you can use appearance, parameters, names, so forth and so on. Let's go to the properties tab and I always like to change the names of my features. Merge, self clinch hit the check mark and now if you take a look in the bodies folder we have a second body in here here we have our merge inheritance feature and so now at this point I'm going to create my user defined feature to do that you go to the tools tab and then UDF library and out of the menu manager you are going to click create and I'm gonna call this 
self clinch nut hit the enter key then you get the choices whether you want this to be standalone or subordinate I'm going to leave the default of subordinate now we have the ability to define the features that will be in the UDF I will select the merge and then hold down the control key and select the whole feature out of the model tree let's click OK and done and done return now it is highlighting the different references that I need to define when the reference is in here it's going to be the body and then I can just call this for my prompt placement body for the next prompt is highlighting oh wait saying that okay this is used by multiple references do I want to write multiple prompts or a single prompt in this case I'm just going to write a single prompt and let's call this placement surface Next, it's highlighting the left side, the first offset reference. I'll call that offset reference one. And then we have offset reference two. And now I have the opportunity to review the prompts. Everything is good here. Let's hit done return. The last thing I'm going to define in here, if I expand the model dialog box, you can also have variable dimensions. So let's double click on that and I'm going to allow the person to change the offset dimension. So I'm using the control key to select those two dimensions and I'll click done return and then done return. Now it's highlighting this dimension. I'm going to call that offset dimension one. And the second one I will call offset dimension two. That is good. Everything is in here that I need. Be aware that you could define a family table of this. You could add some pro program in here. You could have variable parameters and variable elements. But everything in here is what I need. I will click the OK button and it tells me that my UDF has been stored. Great. Now let's create a, another part that we can place it in. So let's hit the new button and I'm going to call this part my tray. And let's select a plane to sketch on. Now let's go to our sketch view. And I want this to be symmetric, so I'll throw in a center line. Let's now sketch in a few lines. Let's snap to equal length. Let me throw in my symmetric constraint. Gets rid of one of my dimensions. Let's throw in a couple of fillets. I will use the equal constraint to make the fillets have the same radius. Oh, let me get out of that mode. And now let's change our different dimensions. These are really big values. Let's change this one. And notice in Creo Parametric 7.0, when you go to change a dimension, it's going to highlight it on the screen. Let's make that 0.5. This height doesn't need to be anywhere near that big. Let's make that 4. And the width, I'm going to make this 16. That's good. I can refit. Uh, let's drag this dimension a little closer to everything else. So that is good for this. I am happy with my sketch. I can use the right mouse button to get out of sketch mode. And let me refit to screen. With the sketch still selected, I'm going to click on the extrude tool. Let me right click over the depth drag handle and I'm going to change this depth to symmetric. And let's use a depth of 12. Let's see, I want to generate solid material so it automatically thickens this. Just like before, I'm going to change this to a thickness of 0 0.06. That is good for my extrude. If I expand the bodies here, there you can see body 1. And I can select body 1 and convert it to sheet metal. Right now it's wanting to know what my driving surface is. Let's pick this surface over here. It adjusts the thickness appropriately. So now I will hit the check mark for the first one. And just so I can distinguish it from the other one, let's apply a color to this body. Let me scroll down over here. I always like my nice light blue colors. This one is a favorite of mine. Select the body and hit the middle 
mouse button and so the color is applied in there. Let's go to the model tab and from here I can put in my user defined feature. Let me zoom in a little bit for where I'm going to place it. Let's click user defined feature. It goes to my folder for UDFs, the one that is pointed to by the config.pro option, pro underscore group underscore dir. Here is the UDF that I just created. I will select it and then click the open button. And then here we have the dialog box where we have the advanced reference configuration. I'm not going to check the option to make the features dependent on the UDF. Let's click the OK button. Now it's prompting me to select the body I want to use and let's select body one to apply it to. The next prompt is for my placement surface. I will click this surface here. Now it's asking for offset reference one. Let me select this side surface. And then for offset reference two, I will select this other surface over here. And you can see the preview of the features in the model tree and in the graphics area. If I go to the variables tab, this is where I can change the different dimensions. So let's change this to a value of two. And maybe I want to change this one to a value of 0.75. You can see how it's adjusting. Everything in here is great. Let's hit the check mark and now I've got my group in the model tree. I can right click on the group and then from the mini toolbar I can choose to pattern this. And right now it is giving me a dimension pattern. You can use this drop down list or the right mouse, oh, let me close the list. Use the right mouse button to change the type of pattern. I'm gonna change this to a direction pattern. And for the direction, I can pick this surface over here. Oh, let me see, I want it going the other direction. Let's do spacing of negative two and change the number of instances to five and hit the check mark. Let's take a look at the bodies in the model. So now you can see that I have all these other additional bodies, let's hide them for a second. I'm going to just select them and then use the hide icon. And because of my user defined feature, we got the hole. If I expand body one over here, you can see the holes that are members of that particular body. They're seeing this option here to show more features. I've never seen that before. Probably because I have not created a body yet with tons and tons of features. And then again, here I have my different self-clinching nuts. Let me select them and show them. So in that way, I've used a UDF to populate multiple bodies inside of my part model. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolewindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.